Hello, everyone. Grayson Geiler here with SES Services. It is Monday, November 28th. I'd like to provide a weekly financial market update. We get some headlines from the financial press and go a little bit further into depth. Uh, so today we're going to talk about economic data weakening a little bit. Okay, so there's a lot of talk out there. There has been a lot of talk out there about how the Fed is raising interest rates so aggressively to try to stamp down on inflation. And it's only a matter of time before we have a serious recession. Uh, that talk obviously got a little bit overdone over the last few months. Uh, we've had economic pullback. We had two consecutive quarters of declining GDP, which by definition is a recession. But things really weren't that bad. Things weren't great. Things really weren't that bad, uh, especially considering all the negativity out there. Uh, lots of inflation uh, in the in the pipeline, and you know economic numbers may look a little better than they actually are because people are paying higher prices for less stuff. So the total economic expenditure numbers look the same, but people are getting less done. Uh, there's all kinds of that stuff going on uh, in the numbers. So again. Uh, fairly tepid economy, uh, people alligator arming a little bit, as we say, not making big financial decisions because they're waiting for an economic dropout. It really just hasn't happened. Now, things are starting to look a little bit different from our perspective. We've said for the last couple of months, we thought the negativity was overdone. Uh, now we've had a real bounce back in stock and bond prices. Uh, because people are assuming that the Federal Reserve isn't going to be able to keep raising so aggressively. Uh, and from these levels, uh, we're starting to put the, the, the risk numbers higher, uh, just in general for, for investing portfolios, starting to make us a little bit nervous at these prices with short-term interest rates as high as they are. Doubting the Federal Reserve will be able to stop raising rates. Uh, well, they've got a meeting coming up in December. Most people are assuming they're going to raise less than 75 basis points, but we'll have to see as we get closer. Um, going forward, though, the, clearly the Federal Reserve won't be able to continue raising interest rates this bad because economic numbers are actually starting to get a little worse. Um, don't have a chart on that. We've got things all the way from the Kansas City Fed Manufacturing Index down quite a lot. Philadelphia uh, numbers uh, coming out of the Federal Reserve up there were drastically lower for October. Um, we've got some retail expenditure numbers aren't so bad. Uh, but in general, economic numbers are start starting to weaken even more. Um, and so in a situation like this, we go back to, well, what do we think the really big risks are uh, out there in the market? What, what, could, what could make cracks in the dam uh, turn into explosions in the dam? And we've talked so repeatedly about the Japanese yen and something that we fear could damage the entire world's monetary system if the Japanese yen, the fourth largest economy in the world, if it really came apart. Well, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. You see, uh, you know, through the year, the Japanese yen lost a lot of ground to all to 25 year lows here in October. We've had a nice bounce. Uh, doesn't look like pending doom. And the, the yen is kind of holding up here near near the top of the several month bounce. So that's kind of good news uh, from the from the perspective of the entire system. Uh, taking on water and the Federal Reserve have to have to bail out more systems around the globe than they already have. Well, one one thing we haven't talked about um, that we want to add to the mix because it's such an ambiguous risk. What's going on in China is starting to really make headlines. Um, you look back to the 2008 uh, economic meltdown worldwide, it wasn't just America. And uh, the Chinese really were the ones stimulating the world economy with an absolute tsunami of, of cheap credit and uh, printing money, uh, handing out easy credit to their manufacturers and that sort of thing. They built a bubble. 
Uh, but doing, but building that bubble, uh, stimulating the entire world economy. Understand they, they were a, an enormous part of uh, the world economy coming back after the two thousand and eight bomb. So we have to pay attention to them now. They've been they've been attempting more severe lockdowns than we have. Their economic numbers are tepid at best. Uh, but now they're talking about more lockdowns because of uh, COVID variants. And the, the, the normal wave of ebb and flow in China looks like it might be breaking. And when we start to get reports from China, hey, this is different, all the, all the not a full on revolution, but the demonstrations, uh, they're getting more serious, more consistent, more all across China. Some people are starting to wonder if China is going to start losing control. The reason, the reason we want to add this to the mix of, uh, you know, and it's a little bit ambiguous, but add this to the mix of risks that we're looking at for, for uh, you know, investors' portfolios and for what we're doing day by day is it, it's really tough to get legitimate numbers out of China. So we just have to put a broad, ambiguous, we don't know, add it to the risk factors and that no, that risk is getting higher in China, without a doubt. Does this turn into a giant revolution and, and President Xi is going to have to step down? None of that. We can't answer any of that. But we can say the risks are very getting more serious. And when you're talking about the second largest economy in the world, the economy that really was a major part of the stimulus uh, of getting the world out of recession in 2008, we have to think about that going forward, especially when we're talking about higher interest rates here in America and asset prices have come rocketing back with interest rates higher. Um, so the upside potential is starting to look like less than the downside risk to us. That's broad in general. Uh, everybody's situation is different. Uh, if you would like to talk about your specific situation, you know, we're we're here, you know, reach out to us. Hope you enjoy our weekly market updates. Um, click the click the subscribe, click uh, like, forward the information to other people if you like. Feel free to reach out to us. We can sit down with you for a, a, a no risk, uh, no obligation consultation. You've got our numbers there. Hope you enjoyed the update from this week and we look back, look forward to seeing you back next week. Thanks. Mm -hmm.